Not the thirst of the throat, though that be the wildest and worst, of physical pangs that smote alone to the heart of Christ. Ringing on wild cry, I thirst from his agony, while the soldiers drank and diced. Not the thirst benign that calls the worker to wine, not the bodily thirst, though that be frenzy accursed. When the mouth is full of sand, and the eyes are gummed up, and the ears trick the soul till it hears water, water at hand, when a man will dig his nails in his breast and drink the blood already that clots and stales, ere its tongue can tip its flood, when the sun is a living devil, vomiting bats of evil, and the moon and night but mock the wretch on his barren rock, and the dome of heaven high arched, like his mouth is arid and parched, and the caves of his heart high spanned are choked with alkali sand. Not this, but a thirst uncharted, body and soul alike, traitors turned black-hearted, seeking a space to strike in a victim already attuned to one vast cord of wound, every separate bone, cold and incarnate grown, distilled from the icy sperm of hell's implacable worm, every drop of the river of blood aflame and a quiver, with poison sweet and sour, with a sudden twitch at the last, like certain jagged daggers, with bloodshot eyes dull glassed, the screaming melee staggers through his village aghast. So blood wrenches its pain, sardonic through heart and brain, every separate nerve awake and alert on a curve whose asymptote's name is never, in a hyperbolic forever, a bitten and burning snake, striking its venom within it, as if it might serve to slake the pain for the tithe of a minute. Awake forever, awake, awake as one never is, while sleep is a possible end, awake in the void, the abyss, whose thirst is an echo of this, that martyrs world without end, world without end, amen. The man that falters and yields for the proverb's month and an hour to the lure of the snow-starred fields where the opium poppies a flower. Only the prick of a needle charged from a wizard well. Is this sufficient to wheedle a soul from heaven to hell? Was man's spirit weaned from fear of its ghosts and gods to fawn at the feet of a fiend? Is it such terrible odds, the heir of ages of wonder, the crown of earth for an hour, the master of tide and thunder against the juice of a flower? I, in the roar and rattle of all the armies of sin, this is the only battle he was never known to win. Slave to the thirst, not thirst, as here it is weakly written, not thirst in the brain black bitten, in the soul more sorely smitten. One dare not think of the worst, beyond the raging and raving, hell of the physical craving, lies in the brain benumbed, at the end of time and space, an abyss unmeasured, unplumbed, the haunt of a face. She is it, she, that found me, in the morphia honeymoon, with silk and steel she bound me, in her poisonous milk she drowned me, even now her arms surround me, stifling me into her swoon, that still, but oh, how rarely, comes at the thrust of the needle, steadily stares and squarely, nor needs to fondle and wheedle, her slave a gasp for a kiss, hers whose horror is his, that knows that viper womb, speckled and barred with black on its rusty amber scales in his tomb, the straining, groaning rack on which he wails, he wails. Her cranial dome is vaulted, her mad Mongolian eyes, aslant with the ecstasies of things immune, exalted, far beyond stars and skies, slits of amber and jet, her snout for the quarry set, fleshy and heavy and gross, bestial, broken across, and below it her mouth that drips, blood from the lips that hide the fangs of a snake, drips on venomous udders, mountainous flanks that fret, 
and the spirit sickens and shudders at the hint of worse things yet. Olya, the golden bait, barbed with infinite pain, fatal fanatical mate of a poisoned body and brain. Olya, the name that leers, its lecherous longing and knavery, whispers in crazy ears the secret spell of her slavery. Horror indeed intense, seduction ever intenser, swinging the smoke of sense from the bowl of a smoldering censer. Behind me, behind and above, she stands that mirror of love. Her fingers are subtle jointed, her nails are polished and pointed, and tipped with spurs of gold. With them she rowels the brain. Her lust is critical cold, and her Chinese cheeks are pale, as she daintily picks profane with her octopus lips and the teeth, jagged and black beneath, pulp and blood from a nail. One swift prick was enough, in days gone by to invoke her. She was incarnate love. In the hours when I first awoke her, little by little I found the truth of her stripped of clothing, bitter beyond all bound, leprous beyond all loathing, black the plague of the pit, her pustules visibly fester, cancerous kisses the bit as the asp caressed her. Dragon of lure and dread, tiger of fury and lust, the quick and chains to the dead, the slime alive in the dust, brazen, shame like a flame, an orgy of pregnant pollution, with hate beyond aim or name, orgasm, death, dissolution. Know you now why her eyes so fearfully glaze, beholding terrors and infamies like filthy flowers unfolding? Laughter widowed of ease, agony barred from sadness, death defeated of peace, is she not madness? She waits for me lazily leering, as moon goes murdering moon, the moon of her triumph is nearing, she will have me holy soon. And you, you Puritan others, who have missed the morphia craving, cry scorn if I call you brothers, curl lip at my maniac raving, fool seven times beguiled, you have not known her? Well, there was never a need, she smiled, to harry you into hell. Morphia is but one, spark of its secular fire, she is the single sun, the type of all desire. All that you would, you are, and all that is crown of a craving. You are a slaver of the wormwood star. Analyzed, reason is raving. Feeling examined is pain. What heaven were to hope for a doubt of it? Life is anguish insane, and death not a way out of it.